In today's video, we're gonna do some mine exploring in one of the biggest gold mines in Nevada. I'm gonna teach you some geology and do some repelling, all that, and a whole lot more. Coming up! All we need is the Tommy guns. Yeah! Listen here, see? We got a big club over here, see? I got Ronnie and Ernie and over here. Feel like a Keystone cop. Oh, look at that. Big old meal from the April Fool's mine. God. Look at all these building foundations down here. What the heck is that over there? Huh? Big one right there. The little tiny ones right here. Ooh, look at these monkers on the hill. Ah, that one still has its roof on it. Look at that. And there's an old car right there. I say, it, it might be. I mean, I would. We've only got a handful of them. Although okay. that guy, John. I mean, there's a lot of. You look, look at these walls and they look pretty darn smooth. They did a good job. I like the way they did this. This looks cool. Yeah, with plastering. Plaster that monkey. We'll put a roof on it. Good to go. Look at that. This thing's been up for over a hundred years. Let's see you build a house that lasts for a hundred years. And everything lines up smooth. So smooth. I'm impressed. And it takes a lot to impress me. Look at these corners. They had to hand pick each stone or quarry it, one of the two. Stick it in here, make sure it fit right. But look at these stones on the corners. These, when you're building any type of structure, the corners are the most strategically important ones because if this falls away, the wall's no good. So look, you have a long stone, short stone, long stone, short stone, long stone, and that's how you build a corner. So they had to find the specific stones with these edges. That's pretty good, that's real good. Real good boy. Don't you say that. You can put a roof on this and move right in. Hey grandpa, what's for breakfast? Or is that what's for supper? Look at these walls. They're like a, over a foot thick. Holy cow. And there's a basement too. Man, somebody was living real good up in here. You got the wood slats in here. And look at see how these are beveled outward. Man, somebody did a good job. Yeah, this is nice. All right, let's all let's stop this jaw dragging because I got geology to teach you. Yeah, I haven't forgot about it. So you know what I'm gonna say? Hey, what am I gonna say? So come on, let's go! You hear that? Did you hear that, boy? All right, look at this. Look at it. This, this is the glory hole of Del Mar. This is what pretty much supported the mill. This is where they got most of their ore at. Can you tell? Hmm? All right, so how did they do it? That's a good question. Take a look around. How do you think they did it? It's called block caving, and I want you to look that up. So down in here is a big old funnel. I'm trying to get up underneath there and take a look. Now, remember I told you I was going to give you a geology class? Guess what? Class is in session, son. The entire Del Mar district sits on what? The outer fracture ring of a collapse called Dara. Now, remember some of my older videos, I told you. Collapsed calderas can produce some fantastic gold. Goldfield is a prime example of that. Here you got what? Tons and tons of quartzite. The quartzite was fractured by the faulting of that collapsed caldera. There's shear zones all over the place here from that outer fracture ring. And the magma down below is still hot. Ooh, and what does that do? It heats up that, that groundwater, and the groundwater starts to move around. They start to travel through all the fractures and fissures. And what they do, they leach out all the mineralization and carry it with them until they get to a point where they said, I've had enough and I'm boiling it out. That's what they did, they dropped it out. Now the quartz here isn't your traditional bull quartz like you're used to seeing, the milky white stuff. This is more of a, a churdy quartz or chalcedonic quartz. And the gold was inside that. There's other types of deposition. There's five major ore shoots that were inside of this tire deposit. But the majority of it was in that brecciated quartz site. It's all fractured, then re-cemented with that churty quartz or chalcedonic quartz. It has gold in it. Now level seven is the level that had the most gold in the free mill gold. It was up to three ounces per ton. 
Ooh, that's stuff that makes your blood boil, don't it? Then when they got down to the 10th level, it started to peter out to a quarter ounce. Wasn't worth nothing down below that. Now the free mill gold was mostly found in what? The hog pen. Now, I want you to look that one up. I'm not gonna sit here all day and tell you about the hog pen. There was three major sources, hog pen, glory hole, and the one I just showed you over there, which is the April Fool vein. April Fool! Well, that's why this place is in interesting, is because a lot of times your quartzite, like in Pioche, was high in base metals and silver. This one was high in gold. The gold ratios were one to three. One ounce of gold to three ounces of silver. It's still electrum, and that's what you're gonna get out here in Nevada. A lot of your epithermals are like that, all that boiling going on. It has a high con of silver, it creates electrum. Anyway, I wanted you to see the glory hole. There's millions of ounces in that glory hole. Now, this gold is different than what you're gonna see in like Arizona, which is a copper porphyry, has more of a reddish tint to the gold. And over in California, orogenic hosted gold deposits, or mesothermal as it's better known, and those are deep seated vein structures that run plenty deep. And that gold is more of a buttery color. And of course, Australia's got the purest gold of all, being 98% pure. Ooh, that's the stuff dreams are made of, boy. So anyway, I'm gonna get back down in the hole and I'm gonna take a look around because I know you wanna see some more stuff. And maybe I'll teach you some more geology if you're good. Hey! So what am I gonna say, hi boy? So come on, let's go! Oh, take a look at this. See the skip where they were pulling the hoist bucket up and run all the way up. Still has the sheave wheel up there at the very top. And then look at that, oh wow. Woo, that's 200 feet right there, 200 plus. And there's square stuff. Ooh, I feel air coming up through there. Mm -mm -mm. There's the hanging bolts right there. See that? And that way they bolt this thing together. Right. More quartzite. You can see the hydrothermal alteration of the quartzite in these pockets. Discount lagging decided to collapse. That's why you don't use discount lagging. I got some positive airflow. You can see all the, the strands on this juniper blowing around. You can see how it's holding back tons and tons of weight. That piece of juniper finally gave way and it's let all this come in. All right, got some copper staining here. I got a piece of quartzite that's been hydrothermally altered. You can see that, it's a no brainer. They said that wherever they were finding copper staining next to this ore, especially on level seven, it was really rich. And of course the hog pen was free mill gold. All right, here's one of the fissures. You're gonna have a lot of that. And that allows space for the hydrothermal fluids to flush in through. And if they're close enough to the surface, they'll boil and drop out their gold. Although I would prefer the lagging to be more like that lagging. Thank you very much. That's lagging. Looks like they had some of the lagging come through. Look at that. Ooh, what's in there? I see something big up in there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I love the way they put these together. Look at that. Look at that little board to hold that timber in place. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Cross cut. Got some slough off the wall, off the rib. Keeps going and going. Looks like they had some type of electrical insulators here for the tram car to run through. Ooh, that's a headache maker right there. Heck yeah. Yeah, there's where that Electrical cable go. Here's a switch. Here's a switch. I got a lot of fresh air in here. A lot of graffiti. I don't know why I got so much graffiti. All right, we'll check it out. You don't see this type of craftsmanship anymore. Each one of these have been notched perfectly to fit. Look at that. That is really nice. Looks like they got the arm off of this one though. Right here. Wow, look at these. Hold the timbers together. 
Call those timber dogs. All right, Bob, I need this timber put in place. All right, Foreman, where do you want it? Up there, you say? Where? Okay, come on. Come on, Bob, help me with this. That's old cut timber, too. You can see how tight the rings are. Look at that. You know what we should do is sneak up on. <laughs> <laughs> I probably might. Yeah, I know, right? I gave away my life. Oh, my boys. Hey, I know that voice. Anyway. Huh? We would have given it away anyway. Yeah. Oh, Up down here a little bit, you'll see it take off to the left. Makes sense. Because when we came in, I remember at Fork, you said take a right. Yeah. And a lot of times, what you'll see when you look down there is actually the sun shining in. All right. You see this? Not that. This. All right. This is a prime example of what? You better know, son. It's a hanging wall. And you know it's a hanging wall because it's hanging over my head. See that? Hanging wall. And then on the bottom on the other side, this would be what? A foot wall. See this? This is a foot wall. Now, you see all this fine dust? You know where that comes from? It comes from blasting. Every time they shoot around, it leaves a tremendous amount of dust everywhere. And that's what this is from. You gotta be careful when you inhale that. But this would be the foot wall over here. Oh, look for an insulator. Look at that. You screw your, your glass insulator on right there. Yeah, that's what we were talking about down at level uh, seven. Get myself. I like how all of a sudden they come in here. Hey, you know what? This rock right here looks loose. Let's, let's put this post here and pound some wedges in there. That'll hold it up. Yeah, we're possibly go with it. Oh, another one. Those are cool. I like to see the glass insulator that's on that thing. Now, that is the way you should do it. That's how you should have your lagging. That's pretty cool, the way they got that supported so it doesn't come down and give you a headache. You'll see these in a lot of mines too, where they only use one post on their caps, and then just wedge the other one on there. You can see where this entire fault has actually got a 20 degree dip to it. And right here, to keep the rocks from falling in on my head, they put miner's wedges up in there to block them. As long as you block them, they can't slide down and hit you in the head. See that? This is changing into granitic rock. That's no longer quartzite. Don't wake them, they get mad when you wake them. Now look at that monker. See him? He's a little baby bat. That means don't wake him up. Don't remember you coming and going. Rock structure's changing. You can see where there's tons and tons of, of faulting and crushing. They use little blocks and miner's wedges. They figure they spread this apart. It, doesn't have the opportunity to slide down and give you a headache. That is what's called a blasting cap tin. This is what they would have blasting caps in. Little number six cap made out of copper. Now, if you notice, we're changing rock structure again. All of a sudden, now we're getting into a new zone. Now you can see this rock is what's called brecciated rock or brecciated quartzite in this case. The rock through faulting has been crushed and then it's been re-cemented. Now in this area, in certain zones, the material that's re-cemented it is a comb quartz or a sugar quartz or what they would refer to as chalcedonic quartz. I'm not seeing that here and that's why they didn't mine this out. But that's why that looks like that. That means all this area right here has been fractured and then you can tell it's changed color. That's from all the hydrothermal fluids creating an altered rock, which is all this nasty red. And then it changes again. So this would be one zone, but obviously it had enough mineralization to warrant them to want to mine it because obviously it's still here. But you can see the zone. It's about this wide, goes all the way up. There must be a fault that runs through here and it's uh, right back and forth and crush this rock up. Look at that, and, you know, all this fine ground mass. All right, no gold there, so I'm not interested. Oh, he's me. Well, he almost flew in my mouth. <laughs> Happens all the time. Now come here, take a look at this. This is why you gotta be careful in mind, son. This is what? You better know what this is called. That's right. It's gonna be the last thing you step in is what it's called. No, it's a winds. And it's a winds in the floor. 
And this one goes down pretty far. I don't see the bottom. You step in one of these by accident, it's the last thing you'll ever do. You can see I got track that goes right over the top of it. It was probably some type of an ore pass if I had to guess. Just by the way it's constructed. I can see the rails on both sides. It's got a natural opening. This would be a perfect place for an ore pass where you bring the ore cart over and you just dump it down inside. But <laughs> you best not forget about where it's at. I like that. All the little holes from the candles. Yeah. You see the size of these beams? These things are monsters. And look at that one. It's missing a beam. Now who in the heck would come in here and remove a beam? A post? That's just crazy talk. Now look at this. Oh yeah, take a look at that boy. All the way down to China. They pull the first 10 feet of ladder out to keep people out. I figured that would discourage them. I have a feeling it didn't work. All right, see where they've been putting their candles in here? Just like at the other one. Boom, like a woodpecker. Put the candle in there, take it out. Put the candle in there, take it out. That looks like about 100,000 little pecks with it for those candle holders. There's one on the other side, too. Man, I'll tell you what, that, that'll give you a headache. And the beams in here, they're all painted white. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Hey, there's somebody down there waving at me. Hi. Now, you repelled all the way down? I repelled halfway down. What happened? Tony and Ken went the rest of the way down. We just got into level... There's a level seemed, down there? Yeah, it seems like it was probably seven that we got into down there. 